Hello and welcome to lecture 63 of my class from data to decisions. I'm Chris Mack and in this lecture we're going to do some model building in R. Now some of the things we're going to do today we've done in the past in some previous lectures in this course. In particular we did uh, some subset comparisons. Uh, we talked about the Mallow CP, we talked about the ANOVA F test for a subset model, uh, and we briefly talked about searching through subsets to find the best subset. Here we're going to do that a little bit more um, and uh, look at both forward and backward uh, stepwise regressions. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's start our favorite data set, this body fat data set. Uh, it's something we've used so many times that it might be a little bit boring now for everybody, but uh, at least we're all familiar with it so we can get started right away. So let me use the dimension command real quick to just note that there are 152 uh, rows and 14 columns. That means with one response variable, there are 13 regressor variables. That gives us a lot of options, a lot of choices to think about all the possible models we could build with 13 regressor variables. So we're going to use uh, the regression subsets routine from the leaps package. So I will have previously installed that package, so I'll load that library. We're going to use a subset plotting routine from CAR, so I'll load that library as well. Now, go down and look at this uh, leaps routine. Um, it's reg subsets or regression subsets. We give it the maximum model we want to look at. In this case, I'll do body fat period. The period, of course, indicates that we want every one of the regressor variables as a primary variable in the model. Um, I'm going to set uh, n best to be 1, method forward, and nv max of 11. So n best is how many of the best subsets a given level a number of parameters we keep in display in our graphs. So on our purposes, the best one is all we really need to look at. And then I have three options for the method. I have a forward stepwise search, a backward stepwise search, and an exhaustive search. Um, we'll start with the forward and see what we get. And then finally, NV max equals 11. So as I, as I move towards larger and larger models, what's the biggest subset I'm willing to look at? Here I say I'm willing to look at a max of 11, or let's change that down to 9. So uh, I only go up to a size of 9, because basically if it gets bigger than that, I don't want to deal with those models. I'm looking for smaller models. In fact, I'm going to use the Bayesian information criterion as my judge, and that pushes me towards parsimony, towards smaller models. All right, so let's run this egg subsets routine, stick the results in a variable I call leaps, then I can use the subsets routine from car to plot the results of leaps, and I'll say, give me the statistic BIC, the Bayesian information criterion. The plot is displayed over here. Uh, I don't want to put a legend there, so I'll just escape, and, and it gives me this little error message down here about, it didn't give me a legend. Leg so here's the, the uh, results. It's a little bigger so we can see it. Or I can, of course, zoom in uh, and look at that graph all by itself. Uh, so we see in the forward regression, we found a best four-parameter model of weight, abdomen, forearm, and wrist. All right. Now, let's do the same thing, except we'll do a backwards regression. Uh, a backward stepwise search. So I will run that with method set to backwards and take a look at my results. Ah, well, it did find the, be the same best or parameter model, uh, either direction. But if we look closely at this graph here and we, uh, we compare the two, we see that they're not exactly the same, right? You see some changes going on there? In this six and seven parameter regime, it's not finding the same best models. Right? There's no guarantee that the forward 
for backward stepwise regressions will find the best model. Exhaustive search, on the other hand, does guarantee that you'll find it. So let's run the exhaustive method. So it searches it in an exhaustive way. And here's the, the best that it gets. It's the same best four parameter model, but it's different in some of these other areas. And sure enough, if I, I look here compared to here, it's changed and here it's changed. So forward, backward, and exhaustive, not all produce the exact same best sets for every subset size. Well, that means we, we probably like to do uh, the exhaustive search whenever we can. Sometimes we can't because there's too many variables to try. Let's look at another example. Here I'm going to do body fat dot caret two, oh, like dot squared. What does that mean? That means give me all of the primary variables in the model and give me every possible interaction between primary variables, every two pair wise interaction. Uh, possible. Well, with 13 variables, that is a lot of potential interaction terms. Um, but I can still do that. I can still do a forward search and a backward search. So let's try that. Here's a forward search. And here's my plot. And we see that the best is going to be uh, shown here um, that's a three parameter model uh, have to look very closely it looks like abdomen weight interaction and then weight and then uh, weight oh it looks like abdomen weight weight um, bicep and then forearm so you have to decode these things carefully. I didn't put the legend on my graph. Uh, but it's the bet, lowest BIC is a three-parameter model, and the BIC is about minus 320. All right, now let's do the same thing, but a backward search. All the parameters are the same. I simply switch the method to be a backward search. And when I look and plot, wow, I get a very different result. First of all, didn't find best three parameter model same if I find a very different three parameter model it says the best model is a six parameter model and its optimum BIC is only maybe 30 minus 305 not nearly as small as the one we found before in other words the backward stepwise search did not find the same best as the forward stepwise search not even close not even close that's the problem with these, these routines. They don't always converge to the same result. Uh, that's why it's nice to always do both forward and backwards, but still you have to wonder if there's something that's not being found in either of those searching routines. That's when we want to do the exhaustive search. All right. So what if we did the exhaustive search in this case? I, I have methods set to be exhaustive right here. Let's run it. And it gives me an error message. What's the error message? Exhaustive search will be slow. It won't let me run it unless I put in the variable really dot big equal true. So if I were to stick that, say, uh, right here, really dot big equal true, then it will let me run it. But I'll tell you, it's going to take a long time. They're not kidding when an exhaustive search is slow. I, I haven't let it run for for days to see how long it might take, but I let it run for an hour and it wasn't done. Uh, so I am not going to do that. And here's one of the, the, the serious issues that we have with exhaustive searches when we have large numbers of potential parameters is it can take too long. I'll mention at the very end uh, that that uh, egg subsets is from the leaps library is not the only stepwise regression approach available in R, as almost every case, there's lots of ways to do everything. The mass library also has a stepwise regression routine. Um, we start by
by loading the mass library. Then I do an LM uh, of the full model I want to look at. Then I'm going to first calculate N, the length of the whole data set, because I'm going to use that in a minute. Then I will put the model that comes out of the full model uh, of my LM, and I'm going to stick it into this routine called Step AIC. Uh, it is a stepwise search using the AIC, uh, AKK, AKAK, uh, information criterion, as the way of judging. But it allows for a variable k, the thing we multiply by p, as the penalty for too many parameters. And if I set k equal to log, log n, that turns it into a Bayesian information criterion, in particular the Swartz Bayesian information criterion. And that way it matches exactly what I was doing in the previous work. Okay, so if I run this routine, it will go through all of the uh, options by, in this case, I set direction to be both. So it does both a forward and a backward step. And it looks for the best. Now, since I did body fat equal dot, it's only looking at the primary uh, terms, no interaction terms. If I do uh, step ANOVA, it gives me a summary of the results. And here it told, tells me the final model is weight plus abdomen plus forearm plus wrist, which is the same thing we found when we looked before. So here's an alternate routine for doing forward and backward stepwise regression. Well, that's the lecture on model building, but I'll finish by just mentioning that using computers to do your work for you isn't the only answer. Right? The searching through parameters to look for the best models is great, but it doesn't replace you, the person with problem domain experts, expertise, someone who knows about the problem you're working on, trying to figure out, based on your understanding of the problem, your theories about what's going on, trying to figure out what the best model might be. Just brute force searches um, aren't usually going to be as good as what you can do to you apply your brain power. So don't turn off your science brain when your statistic brain kicks in. Thank you.